are here and ready to interact with you in a more consciously aware way for you than we normally interact with you. Thank you. Oren, I was wondering today if we could talk about um, detachment um, and I'd love your thoughts on that and maybe start, do you want me to start with a more general question than that or have you got something to say? We can speak to detachment. Detachment is something that is little understood by quite a few people in the spiritual realm, although they have the best intentions and they understand that detachment is a crucial part in the process of creation. There is almost a wanting to pretend that there is detachment when detachment is not actually present in order to trick the universe into giving them the thing that they want. The reason behind the importance of detachment is the fact that you are emitting a vibration always. You are a vibration, but you are also emitting a vibration always. And if you are wanting to have something in your 3D lived experience, it is beneficial to emit the vibration of that thing rather than the lack of that thing. When you have got attachment to a result coming to you, then there is a level in which you are emitting the vibration of not having the thing that you are desiring. It is more conducive to the conscious creation process when you are able to connect to the feeling of already having the thing because ultimately everything is already within you. You are never without the thing. There is an experience of being disconnected from feeling that you have the thing, but you never not have the thing. The external is a mirror to the internal. And as you work internally to feel that all of the things are available to you always because they are, that will become more of a lived experience in your outside 3D world. So can we talk about that more in regards to a relationship where we're often taught as humans in the beginning, you know, we've had all these stories when we're growing up that we'll live, ha get married and live happily ever after. But when it comes to love, we obviously need to fully love ourselves first. How do you let go of detachment of an outcome of a relationship when it's almost a biological need? Or isn't it a biological need? And that's just something that we sort of have believed. We would not call it necessarily a biological need, but at the core of each human is two desires, connection and returning to the whole. Often romantic relationships are the place where you allow yourself to feel like you are completed by someone, by something outside of you. We would not encourage you to feel that you need anything to complete you, but that feeling of the vulnerability that you allow within the space of a romantic relationship allows an experience of connection that you sometimes do not allow yourself to experience in other realms, even though it is always available to you. Okay, and so feeling fully connected first with ourselves and source is the way to feeling that with someone else. Maida had an experience before she began her current relationship that she has shared privately with some people but we are going to share now publicly and she is smiling and is okay with what we are about to tell you. Before Maida began her relationship. She wanted a relationship. She was in a place of luck. She felt like that the experience she was seeking was the experience of intimacy and she did not understand how she was to experience intimacy within herself. She thought that she needed another being with which to commune, with whom to connect to, with whom to share that level of intimacy. So she realised that she was expecting something from the outside without giving it to herself on the inside and played around with the idea of how to find a level of connection and intimacy and how to create the feeling for herself that she had a relationship when, when, when you looked at the external, she did not in fact have that relationship. So she created an imaginary boyfriend and called him Gorgy Boy. And she was with him always, took him places, asked him how his day was, interacted with him regularly to the point where she started to feel like she had a connection with someone. Maida has the advantage of knowing that the energetic connection is always present even when the physical is not. So she was able to create this feeling of connection by feeling within herself that she was already connected to the person that was coming and all she was doing was enjoying the feeling of that experience before the physical manifested. 
when she met Matt, she was so comfortable in her connection with Georgie Boy. She wondered whether or not she should begin a relationship with a human person who had a lot of complications and difficulties, as human relationships often do, whereas her imaginary relationship did not bring to her any complications that she did not desire. So there was a brief period where she wondered, should I do this? It was brief, and she is very glad that she proceeded with that relationship. But the fact that she pondered whether or not she should allows us to communicate to you how much she felt that she had the thing. She was no longer in a place of lacking the thing, wishing for this thing, desiring the thing. It was no longer something external to her. And that is when the external came to her to mirror her internal experience. She already felt as though she was in a relationship because, in fact, she was with the energy of herself, the divine, the collective, and the energy of Matt. But that is not something that she has previously shared publicly. And we share it with you now. I love it so much. Thank you so much for sharing it. Uh, That makes sense. And so it brings me to thinking then about goals and detachment. So we, um, we, uh, we think about these goals, these things that we want. Are you saying that we, like in this example, feel having that thing, but it needs to come from a place of actually having it, not tricking ourselves into feeling like it's something we need to feel a certain thing. I don't think I articulated that right. You articulate it in the same way that it is generally understood, which is a running around in circles by most humans. There is the understanding that you should be detached, but there is also the deep desire for the thing that you want. So you could say that Maida tricked herself or played mind games with herself in order to create the feeling for her. But if you start to think of life as a game, and if you start of thinking about creating the energetic sensations and the emotions and the emotional connection within yourself, as life is a game, playing aspects of that game in ways that are beneficial to you becomes much more accessible. When you tell yourself that you are tricking yourself, that you are pretending, it becomes difficult for the flow that is allowed when you are actually in the place of pretending the way a child pretends. A child pretends and is present with their imaginary friend in that moment. That is what we are encouraging you to do. But if you come to it, if you come to attempt to play with the idea of having something, when you are deeply, deeply mired in the actual experience of not having it, it is going to be too big of a jump for you. It will be too difficult to create within yourself that feeling. So move towards the thing in the way, correction, move towards having the experience of having the thing in small incremental steps. That is still moving you towards progress. Do not think of it as something that must be achieved in its totality before any evidence comes into your experience. As you move internally towards the thing that you want, you will be moving externally towards the thing that you want. You do not need to be 100% totally completely in the space of having the thing before you will see improvements in your outer life. But also we ask you this, why not improve your inner feeling just because it improves your inner feeling? Why do you have to do it in order to create an external outside result? Ultimately, there is a level in which there is a feeling that without it, the thing is still not here. The thing is still not complete. So play around with connecting inwardly, not to change your outer circumstances necessarily, although you will have goals and you will have desires, but because it feels better to do so. Be kind to yourself in the now and bask in the feeling of the thing now just as much as you can until it doesn't feel delicious. When you are in your imagination and you're playing the way a child does with their imagination and you are lost in the experience, it feels light and it feels fun. When you are trying to pretend to yourself that you feel a certain way in order to create a different outcome, that does not feel fun. Be guided by your inner experience. It is your inner experience that will allow you to feel whether you're getting colder or warmer when it comes to the things that you want. But don't just do it in order to get warmer towards the things that you want. Do it because it feels better. Do it because it makes you light and joyous and fun to be around and fun to be connected to your own inner experience of your expansive self. Do it because, because, do it just because. 
or don't yeah. do it. The choice is yours. Yeah. And you mentioned, um, and I'm sure we've talked about this again, but I feel like it's something we could talk about many times, that if someone is in a place of lack when they're trying to manifest something, say, what's the first step if you're in a place of lack about something? To acknowledge and accept the fact that you are in a place of lack. Without that first initial step of acknowledging and accepting where you are, it is impossible to start moving towards the thing that you want. Do not make the fact that you are experiencing lack wrong. Sometimes the way that we speak can make you perceive that we're saying that you're doing it wrong. You are never doing anything wrong. We are responding to your questions in order to have clarity about how to efficiently create the things that you want, but there is no wrong in any of it. Everything that you feel has got a legitimate reason for being in your experience in that moment. And sometimes what you feel is lack. And as you turn towards that part of you and ask what it needs and listen to its concerns and be there for it and love it and encourage it the way you an ideal parenting situation would do, if you could be there the loving, caring, kind, friend, supporter, lover, coach, doctor, healer of those aspects of yourself, everything would be transformed. So the first step, the very first step is to acknowledge and to accept. And the second step is to move towards with love, move towards the part of you that is really wishing for a relationship like right now, who feels like she's not complete without it or whatever it is that she is believing, turn towards her and give her what she needs. She needs to feel possibly special. She needs to feel nurtured. She needs to feel prioritized. She needs some romance. You can romance yourself or you can have a pretend gorgeous boy that romances you within your mind and within your own being for you. But that is still you doing it for yourself and that is what we encourage. Yeah, that makes sense. When it comes to looking at those places of lack, that is the the part of or the starting point of the returning to wholeness process that Maida speaks about. Would that be correct? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So it's showing us the things that we need to look at to feel more wholeness, to feel more connected, to feel loved. In the same way that your body has a splinter and then pushes it to the surface in order to get rid or release what is not it, what is separate from it, the blocks and the wounds that you are holding are in some ways not the same as the core of you. They lie on top of the core of you. The core of you is always perfect, whole and divine. The core of you is love. So those wounds, those blocks, those traumas are constantly being brought to your attention, not because the universe is cruel, but in fact the opposite. They are being brought to your attention because they are standing in the way of you feeling the experience of yourself as that perfect beam of divine wholeness and love that you are. They can be healed. They can be released. And the way they do that is to become first accepted, then acknowledged, and then have their needs met and then allow their paradigms to shift so that they can become part of the whole. You will never get to wholeness by self-rejection and so many of you do that constantly. You try and motivate yourself by trying to get yourself to move away from things when moving towards something is going to be the process that takes you to the wholeness that you deeply seek. You mentioned very briefly before about not needing to see the whole process or seeing the end, um, the the full manifestation immediately. It seems like it would be much easier, almost like a staircase to be taking it all a step at a time. That is how your guidance is designed. You are very seldom taken from exactly where you are to a dramatically transformed version of yourself or your reality in an instant. It is a process of getting to know yourself and your guidance and course correcting and course correcting and course correcting, not because the course you are on is wrong, but because the energy is aligning in order to encourage you closer to what it is that you deeply want for yourself. But you cannot skip the part that involves healing the parts of you that are not ready to accept the thing that you want and still get the thing that you want, the healing part, the clearing part, the acknowledging part, the loving yourself part, 
is not negotiable if you really want to experience all of the things that deep down at the core of you, you really want. There is nothing wrong with desire. You will always desire. Desiring something else does not mean that you are not appreciating or grateful for the thing that you have in front of you. The fact that you have desire means that you are alive. All we are saying is to not be attached to the particular thing coming in order so that you feel the feeling that you think you will have when you experience having it. You can circumvent the process by feeling the feeling first and then you will find that the things come to you in ways that appear miraculous but are actually completely natural. That makes sense. One of the things that often seems like an entire staircase um, and too much to think about in one go is purpose. And it's one of those things that particularly in the spiritual community we're searching for purpose. What would you speak to about that or about taking the first step to that for an individual? We have spoken about this previously and Maida is going to upload it to YouTube so that will be available for a more in-depth response. But we will respond to you here now to say your purpose is joy. That is a complete answer in itself and yet we will expand. Your purpose is joy and for each of you, what gives you joy is slightly different. So there is no big mission and purpose with the heaviness that you tend to attribute to that for your role in this lifetime. Your role in this lifetime is to follow what feels good for you. And as you do that, the ripple effect of impact that you'll be having on your world will be big. It will be powerful. But you are not You are not the most aligned when what you are trying to do is create impact in others. When you follow your impulses, they are guiding you towards what is best for you in that moment. And that is not selfish. That is how your guidance is designed. You are designed to know and feel into what is best for you. And as you act according to that, the benefit will be automatic for others. Your wisdom, your guidance, your inner being will never guide you towards something that is just for your benefit and to the detriment of others. So you can take that piece out of the equation and follow the guidance that is provided for you, by you, in you, towards everything that you want, including positive impact. That is amazing. It's so simple and yet so it's like joy is the single step and the staircase all in one. Yes, and we want to add something further. As you heal the parts of you, as you address them, as you meet their needs, you will be less confused about what is actually a movement towards joy. Sometimes you think you are moving towards joy, but there are things standing in the way from you knowing what your real guidance is really taking you towards. You do not need to sacrifice yourself for the benefit of others. And sometimes because you are loving or because you are caring or because you are sensitive to other people's feelings, you feel like in that self-sacrifice, you will ultimately arrive at joy. That is not going to be the way forward that is most benefit for you or for the people that you are sacrificing yourself for. Clean up your inner world. Get to know your inner world. Heal the wounds that are standing there that are making it difficult for you to know what really is your path forward. And as you do that, we guarantee that everyone will benefit. That's powerful. Thank you. I think that's probably a good place to end today unless there's something else that you have. The final thing that we have is the same thing that we always have, which is to remind you that you are powerful. Humans can complicate things with their minds, but ultimately remember this. You were born knowing what feels good. That is your guidance system. You do not have to add all these levels and layers of complication to the process. Be playful. Be playful. Be playful and that will guide you towards the joy that is within you and also without. It is your purpose. It is what you are on the planet to enact, to embody and to live. But if you live your entire life not experiencing joy, that is not a failure. Whatever you experience here, you are adding to the collective and you are an important part of all of it. So do not feel like you are failing if you are not experiencing joy. Instead, turn to the part of you that feels like is failing in that moment and love it. Love it. Love all the parts of you. Love the dark parts of you. Love love the parts of you that you feel are broken. That will take you to wholeness and that will take you to the actual lived experience of who you really are because who you really are is wholesome. It's whole. It's perfect. 
it's divine, it's love. You are love, which is why you seek it externally in the form of other people. But when you turn within, when you clear the crap that is standing in the way and really connect to the feeling of who you are within, the experience is magical and simultaneously the most natural thing in the world and we wish that for all of you. We love you, we love you, we love you. Go well.